Angelo Bida is the co-chairman of the South Sudan National Dialogue. He had a conversation last year in Juba with the Gurtong editor Jacob J. Ekol, who began by asking him how far they had gone with the National Dialogue and where to from then on. We didn't know we would last so long, but we actually started on the 22nd of May last year, 2017. And uh, we suddenly discovered that it's a, an, up, an uphill a struggle, an uphill process with difficulties. So we have, first of all, studied, set aside, set down to study what it is that we are going to do. What sort of difficulties, as you say, did you face? Uh, we face difficulties of knowing even what is national dialogue. Okay. And uh, so we have to invite experts uh, and we discuss national dialogue elsewhere. Rwanda, Liberia, Central African Republic, South Africa, Yemen, and uh, Tunisia, and all the story and the, the pitfalls. And this is what made me new, what made us know what national dialogue is and what is required of us to do. Two, so we set up a committee, 15 committees to go and consult all our southern Sudanese at a grassroots in the, at the level of 10 states, not the 32 states, 10 states. Because in 10 states, you know, people are not working on basis on community, tribal community. People are brought together and uh, they discuss issues, their infrastructures for discussing for this. And we have done very well by consulting everybody. How many, how many people do you think you have consulted all together? Oh, I cannot tell right now. But You're talking about thousands of people? It could be, yeah, it could be tens and thousands of people. Okay. It's equivalent to, you know, covering the population that vote, uh, that vote in the census, that request to take part in the census. And this is what we have done. And most of these people were from the rural area, from grassroots? Yeah, rural areas, including refugees in Uganda, Kenya, uh, Ethiopia, and Sudan. And we were you are almost about to go to, to Congo and Central African Republic. So we have covered a vast majority of, of our people at the grassroots. Has anything like this been done before in South Sudan, consulting people in these big numbers? No, I think this is the first. And this will be attributed really to the SPLA, SPLM administration, that uh, when they do something goes wrong, they have to go to the grassroots to request. This is what this is the first of its kind. And what did you find? What do people say is the problem? What I can tell you is a vast amount of documents. Uh, with the 15 heads of committees that has gone round, and there were those who gave us, who came to render us a report at the steering committee plenary. And the reports were vast and uh, comprehensive, and it is difficult to say uh, one way at a go what, the, what they say. What we have said instead is the people have spoken. We thought they, could, they couldn't speak so much, and that's why the title of our presentation is the people have spoken as to what went wrong, what actually went wrong since we got independence, and our independence was we, we accepted with 99% uh, referendum result. Uh, how come that it, uh, things have broken down suddenly in the hands of the very people who carried out the liberation? The SPLM. How is that? And there are those split, even the negotiation now is among the SPLM. What happened? And that's why these people have talked very well, and uh, your question is correct. What did they say? I can't say, I, if I tell you now, I cannot say it. They've said every aspect of administration, malaise, starting from... Corruption, uh, corruption tribalism. Corruption, tribalism, 
and the, the leadership of the ruling party uh, are unable to correct anything. The, the parliament is not working work well. The judiciary, the, 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 the president is dicta dictatorial and, uh, and, that, and the administration is corrupt. And so and they go down to things like cattle wrestling. Economy has broken down, you know, very bad results like the unknown gunmen shooting people and the state cannot be able to handle them. And uh, these are things which they want to change. The resolution, some of the things they want to change on this aspect of things. And the thing also, these things has not been tackled by the negotiation in, in Addis Ababa, the high level revitalization, although the thing about the army is uh, something very above the army. Don't you think that when these people are going to come to Juba yeah. with five vice presidents and a lot of new people who don't believe in the national dialogue, don't you think they are going to try to turn down what you have been doing? I wonder if they can. I wonder if they could. Because they may disagree of the, the formation that uh, Salva Kiri is the one who formed us. We, we don't care. We have done our work. They can, they, can, they, can, they can either take over from us or dissolve us or integrate with us. But the thing of national dialogue is there. It is on the record. Our record are already set, which we are discussing now, to take it. The people expect the national dialogue to yeah. do a lot more because they were the people who consulted them. Yes. They want you to see that these things are implemented. Indeed, these were the people. I wonder if anybody from nowhere can come. No, I don't mean nowhere. Just a small elite gathered less than 50 elite to Adsababa and say what the people have said is nothing. It is what they say is correct. It so, is better for them and I've written letters to each and every one of them to come and join us, to come and engage. I didn't say join us, I say come and engage. If you want us to, to broaden, and even they become, they take the leadership, they will not change the truth of the people. And uh, the new government that will be formed will be a credible, it will really be credible enough to, to implement what, we, if they can, to implement what we are saying. We don't care who will sit, but the person who can implement what the people have said is the really institution. It is not a person, it is an institution, credible mechanism to implement what we are talking about. I have had the chance to read what the people have, have said. And one of the things they seem to be calling for would be a change to come up with a new constitution that is inclusive of the people of South Sudan. Is this what something that you will stand behind? Yes. In fact, the national dialogue everywhere, successful one, they end up in constitutional making process. Because there is already a base of a consultation of people. And you can only adjust to make for the deficiency which is here and there. So that the national constitution will involve even the outcome of the of the peace peace process that have taken place under the of the under the uh, uh, the chairmanship of IGAD and there is brought out agreement ceasefire and other things like a cessation of hostilities and the collection of arms in the hands of the people and all this type of thing and then how can the Sudanese society be reconciled? Uh, it's, we cannot go on. Nuer versus Dinga, Dinga versus Nuer, Equatoria versus, you know, and within small tribes. We have to solve this and put the constitution up and put the court, uphold the court, the judiciary, let it work well, the executive and the parliament to be, to supervise the executive and a, a fair and free election to be taken in a conducive atmosphere. Those are the things which people are talking from the grassroots. Said um, Beda, how would you, if you look at our history, the history of South Sudan and the things that we have done, you know, the 1947 conference, the, the, the war we fought with the, in, in the Nyanya period, 
and then the SPLA, and then this national dialogue. How would you rate this national dialogue as a historical event? Really, you have said it well. You have already said it. The only thing I can add is that the 1947 debate was a proper one by the chiefs. It was by the chiefs. The wisdom of the chiefs was being upgraded until Addis Ababa. And uh, when you have the, the agreement, the Addis Ababa agreement, the setup was so nice and it made the southerners, you know, inclusive in Juba under the, the High Executive Council. There was nothing called Dinka Nuer and so on. People were individuals, like Peter Katukot and other people. It was friendship, friendship all over. But the SPLA is led up by intellectuals, not like these chief, chiefs. Chiefs were not educated. The SPLA, when you talk of Dr. Yakmajar, Dr. Uh, Lamakor, Dr. Garang, these were guys, postgraduate people. We expect them to really do better than El Sababa, do better, let alone the chiefs. But that things broke up in the hands of intellectuals. And in the elite is a setup, a social setup, not only a political setup. Uh, there's a need to look at it and then reconcile them and let them go to the wisdom of their forefathers. Anything, any message you would like to give to people here in South Sudan with regards to the national dialogue? Yes, I call upon all Southern Sudanese starting with the elite, the elite who should lead us to reassert themselves, to come to the national dialogue, to embrace national dialogue, uh, with or without me. The national dialogue should be, and I'm talking here on behalf of my co-chair, Abel Alier. We are set up, we are not interested in the posts, we are interested in we are not in, interested in political appointment and so on. But we are interested in our offsprings. We are independent in the independence we have just got. It should be safeguarded and we don't want our children to be killed by unknown gunmen. This is a very dangerous uh, site that uh, the security is there, the military intelligence is there, and yet you still have people of gunmen. And our society have a proliferation of guns killing at each other's neck with cattle, cattle versus agriculturists until the Uganda people are the ones feeding us today. We got a lot of money and we could not control the money to make us roads and bring water and the groundwater and put the things which people are suffering. We set up a government and money cannot go from, the, from Juba to the peripheries. It's all eaten here and very little goes out. So I'm calling everybody to respect and embrace the national dialogue, to come up with really what is supposed to be done and set up a, a, an instrument that may end up in the constitution to see that this, the recommendation of the national dialogue becomes a permanent program for putting the South Sudan on its feet. It doesn't belong to the steering committee. All these things belong to all of us. We are just steering the committee, making it exist, looking for some budget for it. We are not the owners of the national dialogue. You see, the South of Sudanese who are being encouraged to get up a national dialogue and talk the truth, what happened, what really went wrong, what is the solution to it, and what can make it permanent. This is all what we are talking about.